you know I couldn't live anywhere where there wasn't a river close you know or or snow on the ground in the winter that's that's just how always how I've been you know I love Colorado I, don't, I can't think of anywhere else I'd want to live I'm a uh, fourth generation to grow up here come on baby my family farms this area since uh, the 30s. This is what I've known all my life, and I don't want to be the the person in the Holland family that leaves this area. You know, I like I like growing up here. I like I like where I live. You know, we're we're out in the middle of nowhere. We have no neighbors. It's it's great. The Dolores River starts high, steep gradients, runs through uh, spruce forests and uh, oak brush groves up high, and uh, as it gets down here, it's a lower gradient, so it moves really slow and winds back and forth, you know, through big cottonwood stands. And then it, it dumps into slick rock, more of a desert desert landscape, you know, sagebrush, pinyon trees, cedar trees, and then that's where it meets the, the Colorado. When I travel around the western states and I come back to Cortez, come back to the Dolores River Valley, I know I'm home. If you're able to catch fish down here, then you're a pretty good fisherman. Either I spooked him or I need to change flies. You know, we've still got the beauty of the landscape, the mountains, the river, the wildlife. The resource is still here. It's up to us to protect it and pass it on to future generations. I want my grandkids to enjoy this area like I have. In the springtime in the basin, uh, you're gonna deal with a lot of snow and icy conditions, especially in the river and the tributaries. A lot of the tributaries you won't even be able to get to due to the amount of snow and towards the end of May, it'd be the first time you can get to an area like this where it's about 9,300 feet elevation. This area is to the point where it was worth moving out here for. It can't be beat, and uh, it was worth me moving away from all my family from the state of Georgia and coming out here and, and just getting to experience such an incredible place. Flies are coming off. I'm looking at them. That's, that's going to be a good sign. People realize pretty quickly I'm not from here, but not being local, I think, helps me in going and learning about the different places in southwest Colorado. It's been a great experience for me. Yeah, that's a good one. Goodness. Ah, oh, missed a big one. And the fishing, I think, is is as good as anywhere in the world. Did he break it? He might have just broke off, broke me off. That's how they hit it, and I'm telling you, it's a war. There's just so many bodies of water to fish and creeks and tributaries, and, and it really makes it for an interesting time. The fishing where we're at right here is the best, I think, in anywhere in the state of Colorado. It's a hidden area that very few people know about. We try to keep it a secret. We're in a small creek that we're catching 20 inch fish on a regular basis. The water is, you know, a foot deep, but that doesn't stop the fish from growing to as big as they just about get. Primarily brown trout and rainbow trout. If, you know, you can sneak up on and catch some cut bows. We spend a lot of time beating up holes. Oh yeah, man, you're in good shape. One of these.
good day on this river is just being on this river. Part of the reason the fishing is so good is because of the, the uh, aesthetic feeling that you get uh, from being in one of these wild places like this. And the Dolores Basin is just about as wild as it gets. The summer in the high country of Colorado is an amazing short window. When the water comes down and the river's fishable before it snows again, probably the most magical weeks anywhere. That's why I'm out here is for the summertime. The uh, aspens are, of course, uh, their leaves are in full shake when the wind hits and, and they create a rustling sound that's just mind blowing. And wildflowers blooming and lazy Susans and columbines and larkspur, a lot of pretty colors during the summer. Fish are eating dry flies. Rivers are perfectly clear. It's a pristine environment. It's never hot, never too buggy. There is a distinct smell that, that the river has that it's intoxicating. It's one of those places that you always come back to in your mind when you're thinking about perfect places to go fishing. And there are a few places in the whole world where you can go catch fish and the view all around you is as pretty as the view right in front of you. It's one of those wild places that once you come here and, and you've been a part of it, you never forget it. In the fall, it's, uh, it's the most beautiful place in the world. Just look around, you know, all the leaves are changing, the wildlife's getting ready for winter. You can go out and see just about anything you want in Colorado. I, I love it here in the fall. Harvest is wrapping up, which makes me really happy, and it's just a nice time to be out. You know, in the fall, the worst day of fishing, you can be catching a fish at all, but you can just sit down on the bank and look around and Look at the trees and the colors and be pretty content. can't miss it. It's a, it's a beautiful site, unmatched, I think, by anywhere else in the U.S. You got the high snow-covered peaks, 14,000 above peaks, blue blue skies. You got the golden aspens, some of them are just vibrant red. You have the oak brush that's different colors. And there's always that little nip in the air in the fall where it just, it feels like hunting season. Statewide, we have the largest herd of elk in the world. It's a ritual, your camaraderie. I've hunted with the same guys for 30, 40 years now, so. It's satisfying to come out and do something for yourself. We all enjoy playing with the horses. And it is play when you, when you don't do it for a living, it's play. The weather's been beautiful this year, so we haven't had to fight the snow. That makes it nice. One of the guys up the hill shot a big bull. Well, it's a six by six, irregular, atypical. Pretty nice meaty antlers. I don't know what it'll score Boone and Crockett because I don't follow that very much, but it'll, It'll be 300 plus, and it's, it's a nice looking rack. Well, we enjoy ourselves when we're here, so, you know, if we don't get anything, it's worth it. Sometimes we get two or three, and that's really nice, but on the other hand, it doesn't, you don't have to kill something to 
Enjoy it. If you look around, it's gorgeous. And it's one of the, probably the golden jewels in Colorado in my mind. It's, it's just beautiful. A lot of the continuous aspen stands we have here on the district were initiated 100 or 120 years ago with uh, large fires. Aspen's a uh, disturbance dependent species, whether that be fire, insects and disease, or we try to mimic that natural disturbance with um, some harvest. Well, there's been a plant here on this site in continuous operation since 1948. We make uh, fiber for others to make swamp cooler pads, and we make a full line of erosion control products. It goes all over the United States, brings a lot of money into Montezuma County, the southwestern part of the state from the rest of the U.S. We probably have about 300,000 acres of aspen here on the district. We typically cut two to 400 acres a year. When we do harvest, we need to um, make sure that we have a next generation coming up and it seems to be fairly successful in the stands that we've been cutting. We wouldn't be here if we didn't have access for the trees and that's why we like to use it in a responsible, sustained manner. it's an area that needs to be taken care of. I think people need to take a more active role in deciding on what they want to see for their public lands and what they want to, what they value and help protect that. There's more and more visitors to this area every year and the area is not getting any bigger. There's just more impacts on it from people that love it and sometimes they love it a little to death. God didn't make many places like this and Mankind have decided to protect even fewer of those places. And there's just not many places like this in Colorado, let alone in North America. It's easy for, for folks uh, to, uh, to take it for granted. And we can't, we can't allow ourselves to do that. Why shouldn't we protect what we have? too valuable a resource. Once it's gone, it's gone. beautiful setting and you're asking me why I moved here. <laughs> Man, that was jam up. And you know it was a pretty good meal. 